Now that we're in the era of crop tops, I don't look like a toilet roll tube. My goal for this vlog is to make this my best reading month ever. The prequel that we all want is Rob and Ned taking down the Mad King. But I don't feel like I'm open to DNF in a book that I bought two days ago. I don't, don't think I can do that. I have the ability to focus on a book, just not this one. Everyone pat me on the back, because like, your girl done well. Welcome to week three of Magical Readathon. I'm about to head out. I have my keratin treatment on my hair today. We're also doing a second round of lightning on this blonde to make it more, well, like more consistent and also less brassy. But I wanted to do a quick outfit of the day before we went because I'm wearing the first pair of wide leg pants that I've owned since, probably since I was like 12, since the skinny jean was invented and it was acceptable to go outside in leggings. I haven't really worn anything that isn't either slim, like slim is as wide as we go normally. But these surprisingly, now that we're in the era of crop tops, I don't look like a toilet roll tube. I really, really like these pants. So I just, I got these from ASOS. Um, they do have a variety of colours and also this is just like a plain black crop t-shirt but I think I'm, I'm digging this look like I'm real into it so I have about five minutes until I need to leave so I'm gonna get on that I'll pop in a little bit later on let you guys know what I'm reading but in the meantime while I'm getting my hair done I'm gonna leave you with a message from the sponsor of today's video today's video has been sponsored by Ritual Ritual came into being when the founder cat was looking for a prenatal vitamin without any questionable ingredients when cat inevitably could not find a brand that she trusted she decided to found her own. Now Ritual's product line has come a long way since then now including multivitamins, vitamins that support skin and gut health and also protein all with clean traceable ingredients delivering key nutrients to your body every single day. Now a couple of years ago I decided to make steps towards a healthier lifestyle and discovered that vitamins are kind of crucial to this goal. So for that reason I am currently taking Ritual's multivitamin for women 18 plus. I I love how Ritual's key motto of transparency within the ingredient transfers over to this packaging, which is super sleek. But this isn't just for aesthetics only. The capsules themselves are designed to delay release until they hit your small intestine for better absorption. And they're also super gentle on your stomach. So you can take them with or without food, which is great for me because I don't know about you guys, but I always forget to take my vitamin at the same time every day. So this makes it super easy to take them like whenever you remember. And they also have a minty fresh taste. So if you guys want to start a monthly ritual that you can feel good about, you can get your first month of vitamins for 30% off by either scanning the QR code on the screen or heading down to my description box, clicking on the link and entering the code Becca and the Books 30 at checkout. Thank you very much to Ritual for sponsoring this video. Okay, I am back. It is later than anticipated. It's almost 5 p.m. I got home at four, but then I went out and I walked Brie. But oh my God, I am obsessed with my hair. I was obsessed with it when I had it changed from red to this style to start off with but I knew when I had it done like I knew before I had it done that I was going to need at least one more round of lightning look at this it looks so good I'm so happy with it but we need to get this vlog started so it is the final week of Magical Readathon and if you've watched my previous installments of Magical Readathon for this year you will know that I've tried to do something a little bit different or a little bit special like a little bit of a challenge for every week of this readathon, which is my favorite readathon ever. And it has made it such a success for me because I need to bring this energy to my own readathon and hopefully I will. That is what I'm hoping for. I'm manifesting that for myself. But for Magical Readathon, it's been a rip roaring success. So I'm kind of out of ideas at this point. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But for the first time in 2023, I have read over 4,000 pages. This is something that I used to do quite a lot. I think 2021, I was hitting 4,000 pages nearly every month. And for quite a few months of 2022, I hit 4K as well. 4K is a lot, like my average is around 3,500. But for a while there, 4K became the norm. It's not the norm anymore, but at this point in August, I have read 4,332 pages and it is the 25th of the month. So we have a week. And my goal for this vlog is to make this my best reading month ever. Now my best reading month ever at the moment was July 2021 where I read 4,855 pages and I want to go a little bit extra like I don't want to hit 4,856 pages. 
I want to hit 5,000. Now it should be doable. I've read nearly 100 pages today while I was at my hair appointment. But the reason why I'm wondering if I can do it is because I only count pages in finished books. So if we hit the 31st of August, if we hit the 1st of September, and I am 100 pages away from the end of a 500 page book that is going to take me over 5,000 pages, that book doesn't count. So I need to kind of be smart and make sure that I'm picking books, I'm reading books that I know that I can finish by the end of the month. So I'm currently reading a 355, I think, page book, which I thought was gonna be a slow read, but I'm doing pretty well so far. And at the minute with Magical Readathon, I have done the Summon Implant side quest. I've completed all of my career and there's the extra like vocational things that are going on, like the dragon riding qualification. I'm not currently going for those, I'm working on the alchemy quest line that was from the spring round because I did not do as well in spring as I am in the autumn round and that is like a choose your own adventure side quest so you get like a piece of a story you make a choice you get a prompt and you can't read on and find out what your next prompt is until you finish the prompt before which I am struggling with a little bit because this has three stories in it and I wanted to read one story a day but then I'm not currently reading anything else because I don't know what the next prompt is, so I don't know what secondary book to start. But I guess I'll just end up reading past the things. I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of reading done tomorrow. So I guess if I read past a little bit today, read a little bit extra on Sunday, it'll even itself out. But the current prompt that I'm working on, I don't wanna go too much into like the storyline of the side quest. So I don't spoil it for you guys if you haven't done that side quest yet. But my current prompt is to read a book mainly with the magical readathon alchemy ambiance room in the background. So I started this with the room on. I haven't read with it on today because because I was at my hair appointment, but this evening I'm gonna get on it. So this one is a spin-off to the Game of Thrones world. It's actually the group book for Ashley's trip to Croatia, Ashley's Trova trip, which I am going to be going on with her at the beginning of September. It's like the second week of September. So I thought I was gonna do myself a solid because this I had currently penciled in as my first read for September. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do myself a solid. I'm gonna read it at the end of August instead. So it is a prequel to Game of Thrones and it is a side story about Dunk and Egg and Dunk is a knight who is actually he was a squire for a knight of little renown and the knight is an old man he dies and Dunk decides that he wants to be a knight. He heads to a tournament that is happening nearby and proceeds to convince everybody to kind of let him join. And along the way, he picks up this young boy called Egg, who then becomes his squire. Dunk is full of big ideas and just doesn't really, he, he's not grounded in reality right now, essentially, because he thinks that with no experience, he's gonna turn up to this tournament where we have like Lannisters and Baratheons participating. And he thinks he's gonna make a name for himself. Obviously, Obviously, it doesn't go like that, it doesn't go to plan, and we also have a couple of twists and turns in here that Dunk is unaware of that kind of changes the game for him. So this is split into three stories, and I actually, I read the, the end of this yesterday because it has a thing here that says the end of the beginning, and it's essentially a little paragraph from George R. 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 Martin that talks about all of the further adventures that Duncan Egg are going to go on and it's dated in 2015 and I gotta say George R. 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 Martin you are an ambitious guy you got a lot of ideas but you got no follow-through because this is still currently the only published stories in this series once again, we are waiting for a sequel from George R. 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 Martin, but I'm currently 114 pages into this and it did take me a while to get into it. I really didn't care for the first like 60 pages. I, I suppose they were very introductory and now that it's kind of kicked in a little bit, I'm finding myself rooting behind Dunk. I'm loving seeing members of the families that we've come to love and also hate from Game of Thrones and it's passing quite quickly. This is a little bit more of a storified writing style from George R. 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 Martin because when it comes to Game of Thrones, I do tend to find that his writing leans quite dry but in here it's more like the kind of tone you would take if you were sat around a campfire telling somebody the story of Duncan Egg. If that makes sense I'm sure there's a technical term for it. It's more like a tale than an, an epic fantasy novel you know and it also has quite a few full page illustrations as well so not every page is a full page of text. So I'm 114 pages into this. The first story ends at page 118 so my plan for tonight is to finish editing last week's 
vlog because it's Friday night and I don't want to be doing that at the weekend so I want to get that finished and export it. Read four pages of this at least to take me to the second story which is the Swan Sword um, and maybe make a little bit of a dent in the second one as well because tomorrow is the Samantha Shannon event for the 10 year anniversary re-release of The Bone Season that is happening in, did I say it's happening in York? It's in York and I'm going to be going there but I'm meeting up, I'm going with Ryan so I'm meeting up with Ryan in the afternoon, we're going to spend the day in York, get some food and go to the event so I don't foresee myself reading a lot tomorrow so it's probably best that I get like a little bit of a head start today. transparency with Leanne kicking off in about 15 minutes but before we get into that I wanted to show you guys what I picked up in York yesterday. I had a really good time at the event actually and it got me really excited to read the re-release of the bone season which previously I was a little bit dubious you know like why do I have to like why did we have to rewrite a book that we already have? you know, that I already love. Why is this necessary? Like put that energy into continuing the series, not rewriting the series so far, you know. Um, but listening to Samantha Shannon talk about it, it made me more interested in reading the rewrite to see whether the story is any better because the way that she kind of framed it in the talk is that she rewrote this book because she thought that now that she was a better author, now that many years had passed, she could write it better. So the story hasn't changed, but the way that it's delivered has been changed. And like some like continuity errors and things like that, she's fixed that like were never spotted 10 years ago. So I am now interested in rereading that. And I mean, I love the Bone Season series. I'm not a big fan of Priory of the Orange Tree, um, but I love the Bone Season series. And the event was also chaired by Sarah El Arifi, who is the author of The Final Strife and the Battle Drum, which is a series I love. I still say that is the best new fantasy series that I've read in a very long time. and would definitely recommend that. And it was lovely meeting them both. But I did pick up a couple of things. I went into Waterstones looking for a copy of The Pomegranate Gay. And if you watched last week's vlog, you'll know that I was intending to spend my Waterstones point this weekend. Turns out because it's bank holiday they put double points on so I ended up spending money to get more points. Like I said I wasn't particularly interested in this but I did end up picking this up and I did of course get it signed and personalised. So I went in for the pomegranate gate which they didn't have so I ordered it online but the other book that I went in for was the Song of the Marked by SM Gaither which they did have just one copy in stock. I don't know anything about this but it is a fantasy romance series that's recently been picked up by Penguin and every Every time I go into Waterstones I see it and it's intriguing me. I'm currently running a poll for my next Patreon book club series and this is on there. I don't think it's winning because it was one that wasn't voted for the most but one that I threw in because I want to read it. But while it's double points weekend I was like you need to buy this book because I keep seeing it and being like I want to read it but I'll never read it if I don't buy it and I wasn't buying it because as we all know I have enough books I don't need any new ones so I got that. Um, I also picked up a really nice cord jacket from Zara which I've already taken out of the bag and hung up because I didn't want to leave it creased and crumpled in this tote overnight. But I also got some colour drip candles from Urban Outfitters, which I want an area of my fireplace in the living room to have like wax drips on it. And I need to go, I think there's a place that does individual tiles on the industrial estate near me. So I'm going to go and see if I can pick up an individual tile and I want like different bottles with candles in, like covered in wax and I'm putting tile down obviously to protect the actual fireplace so I can move stuff around and not have like bits of wax actually stuck to the marble of the fireplace forever. But yeah this one is it drips pink and purple. 
and this one drip black so i think i'll alternate i got one wine bottle i know that there are cheaper drip candles that i could buy and this is a bit of a gimmick because it's urban outfitters and everything in urban outfitters is a gimmick but i'm very much like i suck at ordering things online but i i'm very good at buying things in store so because i saw them i bought them because otherwise i'll never actually order any drip candles from anywhere but when i've used these ones i will get cheaper ones that aren't from urban outfitters and then ryan finally gave me a tote he was supposed to give me this before we went to rare i'll put the link to this in the description if you want my best friend ryan makes this tote and i was gonna take it to rare so if anybody asked about it i could point them to his shop and he never sent it to me so he finally he finally gave me one yesterday but it is the emily henry book club tote which has all of um her releases on minus the one that she's just announced it's happy place beach read book lovers and people we meet on vacation um so yeah if you want to get your hands on this i will link that down below but it is 10 19 i've just made my coffee i've just proofed and scheduled the vlog that's going up later today it's like a really long vlog as well so i was super last minute on that and thinking about it i think i've left my book upstairs i'm on page 276 so i have about 150 pages left which i am hoping to get done in sprints today i know leanne is planning on going till 10 p.m i definitely won't be i'll probably be dipping out at about five um but while it's a sprint in day i want there's so many other things i want to do i want to repot the rest of my plants and i want to finish deep cleaning this room doing the fireplace and this shelving and desk which is all i have left after last week but we're sprinting and i'm going to be reading so hopefully i'll be checking in with you guys a little bit later um with my final thoughts on a night of the seven kingdoms i'm enjoying it okay so far it's a collection of short stories so like it's good but it's not like i don't know there's cool little bits of information about the game of thrones world that i'm enjoying but aside from that like i'm just enjoying it you know like i'm not loving it i'm just enjoying it and then those extra bits of information are making it a little bit more interesting So it is many, many hours later. It is 10 to 11 and I've just finished Sprints with Leanne. I actually intended to leave at five, but I ended up staying for like the entire thing. But I am about to go and put myself in bed. And before I did that, I wanted to let you know that I have finished A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. I gave this one three stars. I care about the larger connections to the A Song of Ice and Fire series and also knowing who these characters are in the history of the world. Some of that was interesting. I think my favourite story was the first of the three in here, but my overall thoughts of it was that I was bored throughout the first half of all of the stories and then I enjoyed a little bit of the end of them and then there was those little tidbits of information and facts that I did like because they connect to the larger world so not the best George R. R. Martin book I've ever read but just knowing that I don't love short stories I didn't think it was going to be but it is the thing that I love about Game of Thrones more than anything is the world how well thought out it is and the reason why I like Game of Thrones so much is that when you watch the show especially but also with reading the books it feels like historical fiction that's how well thought out it is this feels like an actual history of a world because of how well laid out like all of the lineages are and all of the wars and how they're all referenced and then there's also like things filling in like you have fire and blood and there's this that fill in like parts of the history what i'm saying though george is the prequel that we all want is rob and ned taking down the mad king like that's what you should be giving us because i need to see my boy rhaegar like i am the biggest sim for rhaegar and i need you to give me that story so yeah i gave this one three stars it does complete the prompt of magical readathon that i was working on which is to read with like most of the book with the alchemy theater ambience room in the background which i did i had it on the entire day throat sprints in the like background i've had a slew of three stars recently i feel i also actually because leanne has a thing on her sprints where it's like a wheel and sometimes it will make you change books so i did change and i read the second half of the buffy comic chosen ones which is a set of short stories that's set in the world of the buffy reboot i only read the second half of it because in the read and order of the comic you read the first half earlier and i'm at the point now where i had to read the second half so i did read that i also gave that three stars because not being the big this is the third short story collection i've read this month and not being the biggest fan of short stories to start off with it's even more difficult for me to become invested in them in graphic form because they're even shorter but i will say that i loved the final one in here which was called the sisters of angelus and you could make that a whole spin-off and honestly sign me up to become a sister of angelus i am here for it so those two are done this one isn't for magical readathon i just thought i'd briefly mention it because i did finish it today and i guess i'll talk about it a little bit more in my wrap up just because it 
was just like 50 pages. It seems so inconsequential that I don't want to talk about it for like five minutes. But the next prompt I got for Magical Readathon was a book that I know nothing about. I was torn because like there's stuff on my TBR that I don't know much about but I just picked up a book that was next to me that I truly know nothing about and that is The Song of the March by S.M. Gaither. I think I mentioned when I hauled it it's got Hamilton's hair on it because he's been up on my knee for a lot of today but I mentioned I think that it's one of the options for the next series for my Patreon book club. It's definitely losing the poll so it's definitely not going to be the actual one we do for the book club and so I thought you know what I just want to read it. I did write a little like paraphrase synopsis for it when I set the poll up last week but I honestly could not tell you anything about it at this point and I do kind of want to go into it because I was drawn to the cover of this, saw it had a good rating on Goodreads and I'm intrigued. So that's the reason why I want to read it and I'm not going to refresh myself on the synopsis or anything. I'm going to go straight in but it is a fantasy romance. It's been compared to Throne of Glass. I think it's new adult. I think that the love interest is the captain of the guard or something like that and the king sends the main character on some sort of mission. I'm having some vague recollections of a plague and that is all I can tell you. So I want this done by the end of the month because we're on 4,799 pages. This is a big book. It's over 500 pages, but I have it on good authority that it reads pretty quickly. And compared to what I've been reading recently, the text is massive. So I'm hoping it's gonna read pretty quick. I need to read like 125-ish pages a day for the next four days to get it done. So keep your fingers crossed for me because I'm 56 pages away from August being my best reading month ever. So I have to finish this book to tip over that. But if I do, I'm gonna be on approximately 5,320 something pages and that is one hell of an achievement for me. So I'm gonna go get myself into bed. I'm gonna read a few chapters of this and I'm gonna get some sleep because it is bank holiday Monday tomorrow but I need to finish the Bogopoly board. I want to do the logo, the community shelf cards and if possible also finish up the digital version so that I can get the announcement filmed along with my TBR on Tuesday. Good evening guys. It has just gone midnight so I'm really eager to get myself into bed. It's been a little bit of a late one because I was playing Fortnite but I've had such a productive bank holiday Monday and it's felt very much Sunday vibes but it's been so chill whilst also being still productive. I made a bunch of wax melts which are for my hairdresser's birthday. I don't typically make wax melts. I'm not the biggest fan of them. I much prefer candles but she asked for them specifically so that's her birthday present. I repotted all of my ivies in one of my monsteras which is now I think everything that needed repotting has now been done. I mean the majority of my plants are ivies or monsteras and then I have quite a few succulents as well. So all of that's done. The Bookopoly board is finished. Everything that I need to film the announcement is now done apart from actually like planning out the video and I've posted the finished board on Patreon. The I think if my if I know my schedule I think the next video you see after this one is going to be the announcement so I'm not long to wait now. So y'all can stop asking me questions every day about if the Bogopolathon is happening because <laughs> it is and I've also read quite a bit of Song of the March by S.M. Gaither which is why I'm bringing you a check-in before bed because I am 135 pages into this now. I'm going to read one more chapter which will take me to 154 and this is 
so unengaging. Like I am spacing out when I'm reading this because the writing is just not it. And like, there's nothing wrong with the writing. It's just, there's nothing right with the writing either, if that makes sense. Like it's fine, but it's not telling the story in a way that has me interested. Like it's telling the story in a way that has me actively losing interest in it. At 135 pages in out of 525, I still can't actually tell you what the plot of this book is right now. We're following a girl who I think is a thief. The love interest I think is like the right hand of the Emperor King and the main character has a ill adoptive mother that she works to buy the medicine for her on the black market. It has a lot going on. I see the comparisons to Throne of Glass, but it's not like a, I wanna say right now, it's not a flattering comparison to Throne of Glass. It's a kind of, I took all of these elements from Throne of Glass and reworked them into a different story. Kind of Throne of Glass right now. That being said, while I am being kind of harsh on it, I'm not DNF in this one, because I have to hit over 5,000 pages. And if I DNF the book, it doesn't count. It's only finished book pages that count towards the goal. Also, I'm more open to DNF than I used Used to be but I don't feel like I'm open to DNF in a book that I bought two days ago. I don't, don't think I can do that. Also it's a pretty quick read so at least there's that and while I'm not enjoying this now I am very disappointed because I had super high hopes. It was one of those books that I saw and was like for some reason it's you. Like I want to read you and I'm being it's not it's not I'm not having a great time but I didn't have a great time with Fourth Wing either and I ended up giving that five stars. So while I am very disappointed while I'm not enjoying the book very pretty much at all right now all hope is not lost because I very much felt the same way about Fourth Wing when I started and, and look where we ended up there. It's 4.55 and I have spent the entire day filming. Like I started getting ready for filming at 9 a.m. And I've just finished filming what feels like my 800th video. Realistically, it's my third, but two of them were really long, okay? <laughs> Okay, give a girl a break. So I have filmed the Bacopoli announcement, so that is for sure done. I also filmed my TBR, and I also filmed the um, recommendation video for the bacopoli which had like 60 books in it. So Curtis is out tonight. He's at his mum's for dinner. So I'm gonna make myself some food, and I need to decide what I wanna watch on TV while I eat, because the new series of The Ultimatum's out, so oh my god, yes, I wanna watch that. But I'm still watching Alchemy of Souls. I started A Discovery of Witches on Now TV, two episodes into that or three maybe. I also started season two of Cruel Summer which yes I want to continue on with and I do only get to watch one episode of something tonight because I'm back to working out tonight. I haven't worked out in the past four days because of my keratin treatment. If you don't know when you have a keratin treatment on your hair you can't get it wet for like three to four days so sweating is a no-no. So I'm gonna finally get a workout in and then I'm gonna need to obviously shower and I have the Buffy watch along with my patrons at eight. I also haven't read very much today. I'm on page like 180 Oh, I think 180 exactly actually and I want to be on page 275 I think by the end of the day so yeah I got I still got a lot in my future and this entire week is going to be like that it's finally hit me like how much stuff I have to get done before like the 6th of September and it's a little bit terrifying so I'm going to take some time while I make dinner and watch tv to relax a little bit burn off some stress with my workout and then just relax with Buffy for the rest of the day before I get to editing tomorrow, which is gonna be endless. The level of satisfaction I will feel though if I manage to get everything done is like unparalleled. So fingers crossed we get to that point. I don't feel right. Do you want me to forget you? All the time. I'm glad you're doing
So I just finished a few hours of reading sprints with my patrons and finally at page 422 in this book. I feel like I can kind of tell you what it's about but I have to say like the writing in here is just not holding my attention at all and that has remained true throughout the entirety of this book and I did think there was a possibility it could be me because I'm ready to slow down my reading in September. I know I'm not going to read anywhere near as much as I have in August. I'm actually, I think I will definitely read two books and I definitely need to read two books but my aim is going to be four. So my goals are like right down here and if I exceed expectations I exceed expectations but if not it's fine. Obviously I, I can't maintain this reading pace up for months on end so I'm excited to slow down a little bit and I know that I've pushed myself to the limit where I could be teaching on the edge of burnout although I still am pretty I'm in a pretty good reading mood. So I did accept that maybe it could be me but I have picked up a new book today which was Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I just read one chapter of this because we rolled a double and I love the writing style in this so far so it's definitely not me like I have the ability to focus on a book just not this one. So this is like a new adult fantasy romance we're following a girl called Cassia who is a thief and she encounters a guy in this place called Oblivion and I can't for the life of me remember why she was there this was like chapter one but she meets this guy who's not supposed to be there I think she's on like a an, an information finding mission to find out if the emperor king or the king emperor is meddling in like issues that he shouldn't be so she goes there and she sees this guy she leaves she encounters him again at a tavern where she's trying to steal something from him because of a bet to her friend and eventually he ends up discovering that she is the girl that he saw in this place that they were in and he takes her to the king who sends her on a mission to investigate this plague so there is a magic system in this world that is like derived from the gods and there is also a plague called the fading sickness that is killing people People. and as the years go on it's killing more and more people and it's spreading faster and faster. So Cassia speaks to the king and the king has an idea that maybe the sickness is a magical sickness and for some reason he feels like she because she has survived the sickness herself and pretty much nobody does he feels like she may be able to forge a connection to the victims and if she encountered some of the victims of this plague she would be able to sense a little bit more about them than the average person. So he sends her a and this guy that she'd met in the tavern who is like the captain of the king's guard to go forth on this mission and Cassia ends up finding out some information about herself that she previously did not think was possible. Kind of a basic ish fantasy romance plotline and I gotta say like I see lots of things that I should be loving in this book that I'm not really vibing with like the writing style we've discussed it it's just it's it's not even bad like I wouldn't even say this book is badly written I would just say that it's not captivating me and the world building in here I would say gives the illusion of being a complex like fully fleshed out three-dimensional world but it feels like it's just a veneer like it doesn't feel like there is actually any depth there and I feel like I'm being really harsh with it but like it's so weird to me because this is not it's not bad it just feels very meh across all levels and this has been compared to Throne of Glass I can't remember what else it was compared to but I, I wouldn't personally compare this to Throne of Glass because when I compare things like that, like last week was it, I compared the Pomegranate Gate to City of Brass and the Bear and the Nightingale. And when I did that, I wasn't saying this is the same as these things. I was saying that if you enjoyed these elements, here is something that kind of contains the same elements and does the same thing, but isn't the same story. And this doesn't feel like something I would recommend to fans of Throne of Glass because I feel like if you have read Throne of Glass, it is executed on a much higher level than this is. So if you read this, you would be disappointed, but it has a lot of similarities to Throne of Glass. We have a main character who's a thief. She has a lot of slain and Sardothian energy um, and she has a a mysterious childhood that she doesn't remember. We have a guard captain. We also have the king figure and I feel like the author is trying to give this like Dorian Kale balance in book one but it ain't fooling me. Dorian is not fooling me or the Dorian character in here. He's giving Maven from the Red Queen series and that boy, that boy is not fooling me at all. Now that being said, something really strange about this book. Everything I've said to you I 100% believe okay but for some reason I want to read the sequel to this book. I haven't even finished book one and 
I can't even tell you. I don't think I like this book. I don't. But I don't hate it. And I will say that the banter is 10 out of 10. Maybe not 10 out of 10, maybe like 8 out of 10. But it's very much in line with like Jennifer L. Armentrout and Sarah J. Maas. Like the banter is given very much like early Poppy and Hawk from the Blood and Ash series. And that I do really like. But the action scenes, the world building, the magical creatures, the magic system, none of it is sticking in my brain. And I'm, I'm doing that thing where I'm just zoning out and just coming back into my body five pages later. And it's like, wow, what happened there? I have no idea. Very mixed reviews. Like I, I don't love it at all, but I do want to continue. And I don't understand why. I guess it's not a bad time when I'm reading it. Like I don't hate it or dislike it. I just can't focus on it and that's more frustrating than anything because I want to focus on it. I want to get invested in this. I just don't feel like I can. So I'm going to read to the end of the chapter because the sprint ended like midway through a chapter. I only have eight pages to go which will put me on 430 and tomorrow is the final day of the month. This book has 529 pages and I will have 99 pages to go. So I'm not currently worried about finishing this. It's pretty much a sure deal which means that I will have succeeded. I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch though. So this one is going to be not my first book of September actually because I have a 24 hour readathon with the card rain in a circle tears of my Patreon that's gonna it's on the first and second of the month but it starts at 7 p.m Friday and finishes 7 p.m Saturday um and I actually want to read a bit of romance like I want to read some fast paced maybe contemporary romance or maybe some fantasy romance or a fantasy romance sequel during that just as a little bit of a I don't even want to say it like a refresh but the prompt for the readathon is mood read and I feel like I'm in the mood for good romance or like maybe I'm in the mood for contemporary romance right now. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it but my first main read of September so after that 24 hour readathon is going to be A Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I can't tell you anything about it right now because the back just says that it's following a con artist and there's like feuding nobility um, but it's set in a world that's inspired by Italy and we're following a young woman who is trying to secure a future for herself and her sister so she is a con artist and she's trying to con her way into the nobility essentially but there's some politics going on I'm assuming behind the scenes I really like the writing style so far but I love me an Italian inspired setting it's why I love never or one of the reasons why I love Nevernight so much so I fell straight into this and I'm really excited to continue it is a much slower read than what I've been used to recently but damn am I excited to like get stuck into this one and this is my book club book for the Rome trip that's happening at the end of September. I can't believe that's rolled around so quickly. So as long as I have it done before I head to Rome on like the 22nd of the month, then I'll be a happy girl. I just got the mail and I'm so happy that this has finally arrived. This is from Wool Warehouse and it is some more yarn for my genre blanket. So I ran out of the charcoal color, which is the color that I'm using for fantasy. So I haven't knit, cause I'm very good at keeping on top of my reading spreadsheet and keeping on top of my reading blanket. I, so I ran out of yarn at the pomegranate gate and I think I've read five books since then. So I have a lot of catching up to do. So I think I'm gonna end up doing that tonight. I'm gonna finish my book and then I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna watch some TV and I'm gonna knit five rows onto my blanket. I also have a parcel from Waterstones, which I think is going to be a finished copy of an arc that I read earlier this month. Because I ordered this on Double Points weekend. They didn't have it in store. Was that? Oh, I didn't know we had a sprayed edge on here, guys. I didn't know. I'm glad that I ordered a finished copy now. Sooner rather than later as well before these ones sold out. Can you here, have this. There we go. Now be gone. But I got a finished copy of The Pomegranate Gate by Ariel Kaplan, which 10 out of 10 would recommend this book. I really, really liked it. It has really, really pretty like full color end pages as well. So I am thrilled that I decided to order this. This one, I'm still obsessed with how much I love this and eagerly anticipating the sequel. Thank you once again to Solaris for sending me the arc of this. I'm not really gonna tell you what it's about because you can go check out my vlog. I read it very, very recently. And also my, when you're watching this, my wrap up will have just gone up as well with my thoughts on it. But if you are a fan of the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden or a fan of the City of Brass series by S.A. Chakraborty, I feel like this is one for you and that you'll really enjoy it. It's inspired by by medieval Spain and also contains Jewish folklore as well. Can you stop it? These are not for you. I know, I know it is hard to believe that something in this world isn't for you, isn't it? I know, I feel that way sometimes as well. 
It's okay. It's okay, baby. But today I'm editing a recommendations video that's going to be coming to you at the end of September. I've already proofed and scheduled my TBR to go up today. I have the Bacopalathon announcement to proof and schedule when I finish this editing. And then I'm going to start editing the vlog and that will probably take me to the end of the day if I'm being honest because this recommendations video, I have an hour of footage in for it and I have a bunch of overlays to put over the top as well. So I feel like that's going to take me a good couple of hours to get through. What is up my guys? Happy September 1st. I am ready to film my August wrap up, which I did succeed in having the best reading month ever. And that is all fun and games until it comes to filming the monthly wrap up when it's just not fun anymore and I have many many regrets but as you may have guessed by that statement I finished my final book of the month last night which was the Song of the Marked by S.M. Gaither. Guys right I gave it two stars not a great time was had with this book. Do I want to read the sequel? Yes. Why? I don't know. I don't know but like I just I don't know how to describe my experience with this book because I was just not invested in it at all. But I also didn't have a bad time with it. I gave it two stars because like I thought that the, my issue I think is that the writing was not one that engaged me. So I really struggled to remain present while I was reading this book. And I was just zoning out like so quickly. And it's like I said, I, I picked up other books alongside this. And it's definitely this book, not me. Because I'm not struggling with anything else. I started a new book today. I started a new book last night and Mask of Mirrors, which is a whole thing that we're going to talk about, not in this vlog. But um. All of those books are fine. This one, I couldn't even give you a good synopsis of this book because I can't remember terminology for things. I can't remember the character names and I sure as hell do not know very much about the world building and the plot. The romance in here, yes, I like the banter between them, but I'm not ride or die for it or anything. It's not like it's got a five star romance and a one star fantasy world or anything. It has probably like a 3.5 star romance in a two star fantasy plot. Like I said, in comparison to the book that this has been compared to. Somebody messaged me on Instagram and said that they've heard it's a better from Blood and Ash. I'm not a fan of Blood and Ash anymore. That series went off the rails for me with book three, but I it's not a better Blood and Ash. <laughs> it's really, really not because Jennifer Alarm and Trout has that level of compulsion. To me, this reminded me, if I compared it to anything, it reminds me of a cross between like Blood and Ash and The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford, which is a very plot driven series that's super fast paced, which is why I don't particularly jive with it. And I can't say the same for this though. I can't say that this is super plot driven and fast paced. I feel like this is super surface level. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it because I don't think it was terrible. I don't think it was anything like one way or another. I just was not engaged with the story at all. And I, but I still want to continue. Like I actively want to as well. It's not like a, oh, I wouldn't mind picking up the next book. It's a, if I had, if this was on KU, I potentially would have started book two already. And I honestly can't explain that. That's very not like me. Sometimes I will say like, oh, I didn't like book one, but I'll give book two a chance. And that's a begrudging feeling like I have to give it a chance. That's not what's happening with this. I want to read book two, but I could not for the life of me tell you one reason why. I mean, the end plot twist was kind of cool, but because the world building and the plot I don't think is solid. While I like the plot twist, I don't feel like I trust the author to do it justice in the next book. So I'm not even reading on for that. And I just truly, I truly don't get it. But this did take me over 5,000 pages for Magical Readathon for August, 2023. It actually took me to 5,300 and something, which is intense. Everyone pat me on the back because like your girl done well. But yeah, that was that experience. Disappointing because I literally just bought this full price. But I mean, that's the risk you take when you're picking up a book you've just told. So yeah, that was my 12th book for Magical readathon as well. In the alchemy track, I kind of reached a dead end with the path that I've took, but based on the, it doesn't tell me to go back, but I feel like based on the last line of the story, it's telling me to, like it's insinuating that I should go back and make a different choice. So I think I'm going to carry on with that in the spring equinox. It's actually, I've left it in a good place where I've hit a dead end. So if I never manage to return to the alchemy side quest, then that's fine. But also I do have another route to explore if I do decide to do that, which I mean, hopefully fingers crossed. I'm so sad that we have to wait till April for the next round. I want a magical readathon forever guys. But now we're moving on to Battlethon for September. I am not going to be weekly vlogging for a little while now actually. I think that the next time we're going to be returning to weekly vlogs is going to be in October and they are going to be Bacopoli 
weekly vlogs because of a certain readathon that's going to be announced very soon. So not quite like your standard weekly reading vlog, but that's the plan for then. But the next vlog you're going to see on my channel is going to be a 24 hour slash weekend. I haven't decided how long we're going yet. Romance vlog as I go through my 24 hour readathon with my cadre and inner circle patrons this weekend, which the prompt for that is mood read. And you girl, I don't know if it's because I have an itch that hasn't been scratched by this book. But you girl wants to read some romance fantasy and contemporary so I'm gonna try and read two which trust me is going to be a challenge. But before we see this vlog out I would like to say just one more huge thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. Please remember that you can scan the QR code that is currently on screen or head into my description box, click on the link and enter the code Becca and the books 30 at checkout to get 30% off your first month of Ritual Vitamins. But aside from that guys, I do hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you've made it this far, if you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.